Hi guys, so welcome back to another Ignite Online. I hope you're doing all well. I miss you all a huge amount. Uh, last week was a family service where we looked, because it was Pentecost, um, at, uh, we looked, well, we looked at Pentecost, and we're going to look at Pentecost again this week and look a little bit more about what it means and where the church went from there and we're going to look at that for a few weeks so pentecost was a really big moment in church history it was a lot of people would say it was like the the birth of the church it was done so when we celebrate pentecost it's like the church's birthday because it was the time when the holy spirit was passed down into um into the disciples into the church and at the end of the day if we didn't have the holy spirit within our church then we're basically just people meeting in a building, uh, talking about stuff that happened a long time ago. And we all know that that um, having a relationship with Christ is much more than just that. So we're going to be looking at that a little bit more this week. Um, and we're going to be looking at the importance of the Holy Spirit. But first, we're going to have a look at well, what is the Holy Spirit? Let's look into our Bibles and just quickly, there's a, a few lines that you can look at that give us an idea of what the Holy Spirit is if you haven't experienced it yourself. So the first one, it says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So the Holy Spirit, number one, is sent from God and he's a teacher. He teaches us things about the Bible, about knowing Christ, and he helps us to remember and reminds us of all these different things that we that we um, learn about Christ and how we get to know Christ. Next one, it says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, uh, for as we ought but the Spirit himself intercedes for intercedes for us so what that means is when we're finding things really difficult the holy spirit is there to help us and when we don't know what to pray about the holy spirit is there to to help us pray he puts thoughts and pictures into our minds okay and it helps us to know what to pray for next one it says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness, self-control. So these are all things that the Holy Spirit helps us in as we go about our daily lives. So he helps us to love one another. He helps us to be faithful. He helps us to have self-control. So that and the final one, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. So the Holy Spirit is, is in us once we get to know Christ. Okay, He is with us, he helps us and he's there forevermore. So that's what sort of gives us an idea of what the Holy Spirit is if you're unsure with to start. But before we go any further... I have a quick game for you. Now, you can either do this, obviously, if there's a group of you, you can do this competitively, or you can just test yourself. In a minute, I am going to show you uh, an image or images of uh, some objects. Okay, so they'll be on the table, and you will have that for about 30 seconds, and then I'm going to take it away and pause. You've got to pause the video. And I want to see how many you can remember. So you can compete against each other or you can just test yourself. See how many of those objects you can remember. You can either just remember them or write them down. So I'll give you those objects now.
So I hope you you guys enjoyed that little test of memory. Now I know some of you, your memories might not be that good. So I've got a short video about Pentecost, re-looking at the story that we looked at last week so that you know you can just get an idea, remind yourself what Pentecost is all about, what happened during Pentecost, and then we will look back at what we're going to do today. Stories of the Bible. God sends the Holy Spirit. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. Before Jesus went to heaven, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until God sent the gift he promised. See ya. So after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles stayed in Jerusalem along with the other people who believed in Jesus. One day they were all gathered together when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm. Whoa! Then what looked like flames appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in other languages, and so they started speaking. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, they came running to see what it was. What's going on? When they saw the believers speaking in their own languages, they were shocked and amazed. Hey, do you hear this? They wondered, how can this be? These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages about the wonderful things God has done. What can this mean? Nah, whatever. But others in the crowd didn't believe that it was really a miracle and thought the believers were just acting oddly. Nah. Then Peter stepped forward and shouted to the crowd, Hey, all you! Listen carefully, all you! He told them that they were not acting strangely, but that this was from God. He reminded them that God said this would happen long ago. Then Peter told them about how Jesus was crucified, but then raised to life again, just as God had said he would be. He told them that Jesus was now in heaven and that God had given the Holy Spirit to them as he had promised. Peter's words changed what the people thought and felt, and they asked, Brothers, what should we do? Peter told them, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Peter continued to preach to the crowd for a long time, and those who believed what Peter said were baptized. 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church that day. Then all the believers listened to the apostles' teaching and practiced what they taught. Hey! They met together in fellowship, shared meals, and prayed together. They were amazed as the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Here you go. Take this. Ah, oh, thank you. They helped those in need. Here, this is for you. Thank you. Worshipped together at the temple every day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy all while praising God and enjoying each other. And each day, God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So I hope that was a useful reminder of what Pentecost was or is and why we celebrate it. Um, what we're going to do now or what we're going to do for the rest of the day is we're going to be looking particularly at the part where it says about people speaking in different languages so that uh, other people could understand them. Now, to demonstrate this, I've got a few different lines of the same verse that I'm going to read out but in different languages before we get to uh, get to the English version. Now, what I would like you to do is, before I get to the end, because I'll tell you at the end of each line what language I'm speaking, um, you've got to try and figure out which language it is. I apologize in advance if there is any native speakers of this language watching. This is going to be terrible, I'm sorry. So, first one to start. Alors, quiconque invoquera le nom du Seigneur sera sauvé. 
Okay, that is French. The next one we've got. Und es wird geschehen, jeder der den Namen des Herrn anrufen wird, wird errettet werden. That is German, just in case you didn't get that for my incredible, uh, my incredible accent. Uh, the next one, hopefully, I've been studying this one, so hopefully this one should be a little bit better. Allora, chiunque invocherà il nome del Signore sarà salvat salvato. That is Italian. And again, I'm sorry for any Italians who are watching. The final one, okay. I've never spoken this word in my life, so yeah. E todo aquel que invocare el nombre del Señor será salvo. That is Spanish. So the English verse is Acts 2 21, and it is, and anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So as the Holy Spirit fell on the disciples, they began to speak in a lot of different languages, okay? So all these different Jews, these people who were around Jerusalem at the time, they had, they didn't all speak the same language, but all of a sudden these disciples were speaking this message of Christ to them in their own language. Now, I want you to take a couple of minutes and either think about or discuss, if there's more than one of you there, two questions. The first question is, why was it important for people to hear about Jesus in their own language? And the second question, what difference did it make? Okay, so why was it important for people to hear about Jesus in their own language? And what difference did it make? Take a few minutes, pause, and we'll be back in a minute. So hopefully you've had enough time to discuss those two questions and come up with lots of different answers. The main reason really is that so the people who are hearing it could fully understand it and that there were no mistakes. That's that's my opinion anyway, you know. If you hear something translated as you probably all know, if you Google translate something which obviously wasn't around back then, then Sometimes there's mistakes. Sometimes people mishear things or don't com doesn't translate completely. Uh, it was so important because the difference it made was that it meant that people could take this message of Christ around the world without any um, without any differences, without any mistakes. Okay, it's like if they hadn't quite heard it, it'd be like a game of Chinese whispers around the world where one person would say one thing and it'd get changed, it'd get changed again and again and again, and it'd be really distorted and different for what the, from what the original message was. There was also a level of trust. Um, and if you hear somebody speaking your own language, imagine for a second that you're on holiday somewhere and you hear somebody speaking your own language, you're immediately going to trust them and trust what they say. And, and, Maybe believe in them a, a little bit more as well in whatever it is, you you know, if you're trying to get directions to the shop or, or something like that. It can be really, a, it can be a really big deal hearing something in your own language. And that still sits well with today, with what we're supposed to be doing. Now, I'm not suggesting, unless you particularly want to, that you go and learn a whole language so that you can go and recite, read the Bible to uh, a group of Italians. If you want to, you can, if that's what you feel called to. Um, but what I'm saying is that with your friends at school or, or wherever your, your, your friends are, you know, youth group, whatever, you want to try and speak their own language. Like, so some of you might not know, I I used to be a teacher. I trained as a teacher. And what we would try to do is try to explain things. And you probably see your teachers doing it. Try to explain things that maybe the kids aren't particularly interested in, in a way that makes them interested. So I might try and teach some maths through 
um, talking about football scores, for example. I might try doing some science by looking at, um, I don't know, I'm going to say the science of football again, because that's that's what I like. So you're trying, uh, we as teachers try to speak the, the person's language who you were trying to talk to. And that's what you guys need to, uh, need to do. And you probably already are doing when you speak to your friends about, about Christ, about what you believe, you know, think about, well, actually, how how do I get them interested? Okay, maybe in a lot of cases, maybe I'll invite them to um, some food that we're a meal that we're having, or maybe I'll invite them to the fun day because I know that we've got um, face painting and we play football there and stuff like that, and they can see that actually church isn't all just loads of weirdos and in a building. Like it's it's there's some fun stuff, you know. So that's really what what I take away from this message is that we still need to speak the different languages of the people that we're talking to when we talk about Christ and when we give them that message, that message that is anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. It's a really important message. So what we're going to do next, we're going to do something slightly different. We are going to pray but what we're going to do is, in a moment, different slide, a few different slides are going to come on the screen. So there's going to be a, a slide um, with some uh, a picture and maybe some noise as well to remind you of one particular element from the story. So wind, for example, and on that it will tell you, uh, it will give you something to to pray about. Okay, so if you pause that, pray about that for a little bit. And then restart the video and then there'll be another one that comes up about that will help you pray about something else okay so give it a go and we'll see you in a minute
So I hope you've had a good time and a good chance to pray uh, about all those different things. And I hope that you will carry on praying, carry on reading your Bible as the week go, the weeks go on. Now, that's the end of our session today. In a minute, if you want to go and uh, listen to some worship songs, I'm going to put up uh, a couple of worship song suggestions um, that you can go and take a listen to. But I hope you all have enjoyed this session. and. I really, really hope that I get to see you all uh, sometime soon. Have a good week and stay safe.